Have you ever seen layouts that look like this, this, or this, and thought to yourself, wow, that would be impossible to make in HTML and CSS? Well, if that's the case, then we're gonna take this layout and we're going to make that a reality in the browser with HTML and CSS and specifically the grid. All right, so let's get started. All right, so here we are in Figma and we can see our, you know, our ugly brutalist design. And I'm gonna make this file, by the way, available, YouTube description, uh, you could just, uh, it's gonna be available in the Figma community. So if you wanna follow along, I, I just I suggest doing it. All right, so uh, first of all, we have a uh, Montserrat fonts here. So we'll wanna import that in the HTML. and. Um, let's get the basic HTML and CSS set up real quickly, and then we'll start breaking this down in terms of how we're gonna structure the CSS grid. All right, so I have um, here in Visual Studio Code an index.html currently empty. Um, we have a, a folder called CSS and a main.css file that is empty as well. All right, so M abbreviation, we're gonna do an exclamation point enter just to get a quick boilerplate here. We're going to type in link CSS main.css to get our CSS file ready and rocking. Um, I already have off the screen the uh, font import for Montserrat of weights 300 and 800. All right, and that's what we want. And let's go to our CSS. Um, I use this font size 62.5% hack here uh, just to make the conversion from uh, pixels to M or rem units really easy. Uh, if you're unsure what that is, go to Google and type 62.5% uh, CSS and you'll get the uh, explanation there. Um, we're also gonna have a body here, uh, a background. There's a very, it's a, it's it's not white, it's just uh, it has a little bit of like orangish yellow and it. it's kind of like a, a very light beige. Uh, we got the font family monster right here and then height, 100 viewport height, setting on the body. That's just because we're, we don't have enough content to push it uh, and we wanna be able to, actually we probably don't even need to put this but I have a, a habit of doing that for uh, tutorial purposes. But anyway, um, so let's go ahead back here and let's start breaking this apart. So it does look at first glance like it's kind of random and like how could you construct this with CSS? It's, it's actually pretty straightforward. So think of everything as rectangles, essentially boxes. All right, so I'm gonna get out a box here and we're gonna break this down. So overall we have and let me just uh, get rid of that fill. We'll just add a temporary stroke. You don't have to follow this part, by the way. Um, and we'll make this nice and large. All right, so this right here is gonna be a section element in our HTML. Um, this is going to be basically the grid container, the CSS grid, all right? Now, this wow right here in the background, uh, we're not even gonna account for that in HTML because we can just use a pseudo uh, element of a background, or not background, but before, and then we'll use content uh, property in CSS, wow, and we'll just position absolute that sucker right there based on the section property. All right, um, and you'll see how that's done in a second. Um, so this is our grid container. So we have to think about, uh, now that we know what our grid container is going to be, the section element, uh, how many columns and how many rows there are. All right, so let's tackle the columns first. So I'm gonna duplicate this. First column is right here, all right? It's this picture and this picture beneath it. All right, uh, we're gonna duplicate that. The second column is actually right here with this picture and the beginning of this type, this get fashion type, which will be an H1 element. The next column is gonna be right here, naturally, in this big empty area, well, mostly empty area right here. All right, so there are three columns, one, two, three. Um, after that, let's take this, we'll duplicate that. How many rows are there? Well, the first row is established by basically the, the bottom of this type and the top of this uh, uh, this photograph right here and this element right here. So that's our first uh, row rather. The next row is, is established right here in this white space between this photograph and this photograph. And the final row is right here. So it's actually pretty straightforward. We have three columns, three rows. Now, of course, you can see that they are not all proportional to each other. We don't have perfect squares, you know, nine different perfect uh, grid items. So we'll have to account for that using grid template rows and grid template columns. 
uh, in order to set these up correctly in terms of the row height and the column height, or uh, the column width as well. All right, see, very, it's very straightforward once you start to break things down. Okay, so what we'll do now is let's go ahead and I'm gonna take all that crap that I just added, we'll group them and then just hide it uh, right there. All right, now it's looking better. Let's go back and let's start writing the HTML for this structure. All right, HTML. All right, so we're gonna have an overall wrapper right here. And in CSS, when we write the rule set for this, this is just gonna be like a thousand pixels width, and then we're gonna margin zero auto it. We're not gonna make this responsive. I know a lot of you are thinking, ooh, it'd be so hard to make responsive. It's not hard to make this responsive. I just wanted to demonstrate how to do this on desktop first. Um, now we're gonna have our section element inside of here, and then we're gonna start basically putting how many different elements? We're gonna put one, two, three, four, five, and six. So there's basically six elements here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, and we're just gonna put them all inside the section element. All right, so the first one's going to be an image, and that's gonna be source equals, oops, not source equals, uh, assets forward slash pet3.jpg, Alt is going to be pet tiger. <laughs> like that's a good idea. Although I have a pet 18 foot snake and a five foot uh, water monitor. Never mind that. Um, class is going to be tiger. All right. Now I don't have those currently in here, so I, I'm going to pause and get those files in there. And there they are, pet one, two, and three. Um, so let's continue writing this out. After that, we have our H1 element. And so, by the way, the order which I'm doing these uh, is basically from uh, top to right and to bottom. So uh, this will be the next, this will be next. I think we put this one next, and then this, and then this, and then this. Or actually, no, these two kind of stay in the same element. You'll see that in a second. All right, so H1, uh, we're gonna say is get fashion. And be, if you're using the grid, the order of these HTML elements um, doesn't really matter, uh, and you'll see why once we get to that uh, part. Source equals assets pet two dot jpeg class equals dog. Damn it! I hate when it, that keeps on happening. I uh, will say pet dog, whatever, um, and then we're gonna have our uh, this section right here, the content section. So the content section we're actually going to have a, a parent element that wraps around this right here. And the reason being is because we look at this white space, we're gonna make this actually a Flexbox container. Um, and if I hit R right here, you'll see what I mean. Uh, in this Flexbox container, uh, we'll use justify content um, space between, I believe that's the property. And, and in order to push this to down to the very bottom to separate these two. All right, so going back, we're just gonna call this a class of content. And inside of here, we'll have a paragraph. I already have this, the type saved. So I'm just gonna paste that in. And then we also have our link going nowhere. And we're gonna have, um, this is gonna be flex, a Flexbox container as well. So it's a span element for our anchor text, shop wow and then an SVG element, which all we have to do is go over here, grab that little arrow, right click, copy as SVG, and then paste it. Get rid of that white space. All right, so that's our class content. After that, all we have is uh, our image source is, you know what, let's just copy this. <coughs> Pet, um, this is pet one, this is pet fish, <laughs> and then we'll just say, those are the like, lamest alt descriptions ever. All right, so class is fish, and that's it. This is our HTML, let's right click. Uh, open with live server, you'll need the live server extension. And this is what it looks like so far. Horrendously ugly, looks nothing like our ugly layout. All right. So let's get started here. So the first thing we'll do is take that wrapper, which is our first element, everything resides within, with 1,000 pixels, margin, zero auto, 
that centers everything here in the browser. Next up, we're gonna have our section. All right, so for our section, we're gonna say, uh, let's give it that, um, it's gonna have the same background color right here. So let's just paste that in. Um, we're going to give it an explicit height of 500 pixels. We're going to margin top the crap out of this thing, 20 M units, just to give it away from the top of the browser, give us some white space. We're going to have a padding of two M units. So inside of it, uh, that's the white space. All right, so now we're gonna have our display grid. All right, this is the fun part. Grid template areas is a fun property if you're a nerd like me. So grid template areas. Now what we do, if you're not familiar with grid template areas, allows you to basically assign your rows and columns and even give them names, all right? So we have to figure out, you know, based on our rows and columns and what needs to span, which rows need to span from one grid line to another, uh, we have to figure out the naming conventions of these. So here's how I'm going to do it. Uh, looking at our Figma document, we have a tiger here. So th this tiger actually spans, let's bring back our, uh, where's our uh, thingy at? Oh, I didn't hide it there, there we go. This tiger spans actually two rows. The first, uh, the first column, first row, and then the second row. So we're gonna name it tiger. Here's how we do this. So tiger here. <clears throat> And then this is the first row right here, and you'll see we'll have multiple lines right there. So tiger is gonna be here as well. Next up, we're going to have this part. This one's gonna, we'll call this the header. You could, you could call it the headline too, whatever. So that's gonna be the first row, header, header. Simple. Next up, referring back, we have a dog. In the second column, second row, and then we have content in our uh, second row, third column. So we say dog content. Finally, after that, we have the fish at the bottom. If you don't believe me, it is right there. And then we have the dog and then content. So we say dog content. That's it, for that property at least. Now, if we save this, it's not gonna look like our thing because it's all broken and terrible looking. So um, part of the reason for that is because of the image element. Uh, so what we wanna do is take our image element and we're gonna say with 100% height, 100% object fit, cover, and aspect ratio one to one. Let's save this. All right, so <coughs> It's still not looking correct. Why? Well, we need to name, we, we need to assign these names that were specified in grid template areas to those HTML elements. Because right now they don't know what is going with, with where, all right? So to do that, we're just gonna take our tiger, we're gonna say grid area, tiger. Now let me make sure I actually gave these classes. Yep, class tiger, dog, or H1 element content, uh, fish as well, okay. So that's the first one. We're gonna have our H1, the grid area, is going to be header. The next one after that, dog is grid area, dog. Content, grid area is content. Fish, grid area is fish. All right, save it. All right, so if we compare these, it's actually pretty much the same structure. Um, it's just, here, let's hide that real quick. It is just, uh, it doesn't have the white space. Let's get these side by side. It doesn't have the white space and all that stuff, but this is basically the same structure. So let's continue on and getting this thing looking a little bit more accurate. So let's close that out. All right, so now what we wanna do is we wanna work on sizing. Now, first of all, one of the things that really is killing it is the gap. Let's put gap two M units, and that'll at least push things away in the result right here. There we go, a lot better. Now, 
we also want to structure the height of the rows and the height of the columns. So to do that, grid template, columns. We're gonna repeat the first two as one fractional unit, and then the next, the third, the third uh, column is gonna be two fractional units. So what that does is it gives the third column basically um, 66 or two, two thirds um, of the, the available column, the width of, you know, that's established by the section element. Um, then next up after that, let's just repeat this, grid template rows. So the top row, if you recall, is actually pretty small. And we could use auto for that. That's only going to assume the amount of size for this uh, get fashion type right here. Um, this, this middle one right here, we're just gonna put one fractional unit. And then for this bottom part down here, we're just gonna put like 100 pixels or so. So we'll say auto, one fractional unit and 100 pixels. Save it. All right. Now, of course, this is all screwed up still, that tiny type. The reason the type is so small is because we did that font size 62.5%, but we'll fix that in a second. All right, so now what we're gonna do is let's get out the, the font stuff here. So our H1 is gonna be font size 2.2 rem units because it's 22 pixels in Figma. And that's what that, that's the value of this font size hack right there. We could do this conversions easily just by moving a decimal point. Text transform is gonna be uppercase. Uh, yep, and then font weight will be 300. Margin zero to get rid of any uh, default margin. Now, if we save this and look at it. Uh, oh yeah, I was looking at the wrong rule set on my reference code monitor. There we go, that's a lot better. Now notice there's a little bit too much white space. One of the things that can affect that outside of margin and padding is line height if we're dealing with type. So line height, let's just set, set, reset this to one M units and you'll see that it reduces that. Now we're a lot closer to what it looks like in the Figma document. All right, that's a lot better. Now next up, we're gonna have a paragraph element and that's the one that's font size 2.2 rem units. Uh, text transform will be uppercase. And this is gonna get us a lot closer. There we go. After that, we're gonna have our call to action, shop wow. That's gonna be text decoration is none for to get rid of that underline. Color is gonna be black. Display flex because we have the text and span element and then the uh, SVG arrow. And then we're gonna align items center to get those vertically centered and then we're gonna have a gap of one M unit between them like that. Now this font size as well, um, oh, I forgot, we need to add A there as well. So it, it styles the, the link as well, there we go. Then we're gonna take our content. The content element is the parent element of, right here, the paragraph and the link itself. So we need to make that a, a Flexbox container as well, so that, let's get this back up here. Uh, come on, Gary, there we go. Um, so that we can create, uh, use space between in order to separate those out. So display flex, flex direction, we're going to change to column, and then justify content, space between, save it. There we go, it's at the bottom. Alrighty. <coughs> now notice there's a little bit of white space here. We don't want this at the top. So we're gonna take our paragraph, margin top, or margin rather, zero. There we go. Now it's right there where it needs to be. And then finally, what about that wow in the background? Very, very easy. All we do is go to section, because we're gonna use a pseudo element of before on our section um, element. We're gonna say uh, position relative, and then section before position absolute. 
So as I've talked about this in, on the channel a long time, um, whenever you're using these before or after pseudo elements with this position absolute, you put position relative on the parent container. If you don't, if you don't put this property here, when you start to try to move this thing around, um, it's not in relation to this element. And we want it to stay right wherever that uh, section element is. So now what we do is we specify content wow. We'll put in font weight 100, 800 rather. Z index to push it behind the section element is negative one. Font size is gonna be big, 30 rem units. It's 300 pixels uh, in Figma. And then we're gonna to do top 190 pixels, negative 190 rather, and left negative 300. And that should be it. There it is. And notice it stays there. Just to demonstrate if we remove relative, probably won't be able to see much of it. Yep, that's because it's gonna be in relation to the body element itself. So that's why we want relative there. And that is it. Very, very cool, awesome, awesome stuff. All right, everybody, hopefully you found that enjoyable. So from now on, you can now look at one of those ugly, brutalist layouts, and you can say with confidence, oh, I can make that a reality with HTML, CSS, and a grid. No big deal. All right, everybody, hopefully you enjoyed that. If you did, make sure to check out designcourse.com. Subscribe here, like, comment, all that crap, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.